Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Joan Fontaine and Brian Ahern in Suspicion with Nigel Bruce. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. <laughs> Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. We Americans are a nation of mystery lovers. The sliding panel, the creaking stair, bring a shiver of pleasure to a hundred million spines. We wait with bated breath for the next chapter to reveal who done it. And don't tell me there's nothing new in mysteries either. Because we have it here tonight, the RKO drama, Suspicion. It's the same gripping yarn that gave Joan Fontaine the part that won her an Academy Award. And tonight she co-stars with Brian Ahern. There are no sliding panels or creaking stairs in Suspicion. But in just about three acts from now, I think you'll agree it's one of the most absorbing mysteries of the year. Two young people in love with a strange threat hanging over them. These are the ingredients of suspicion. Shake well and you have an excellent spring tonic. And in the spring, a housewife's fancy usually turns to thoughts of house cleaning. But we got a different slant on the subject the other day from a listener in North Dakota. I don't believe anyone is happier to see spring come than we are up here, she writes. And so it seems like a good time to thank Lux Flakes for bringing us the Lux Radio Theater. It's our most valued entertainment all winter long. We aren't snowed in all the time, but we don't go very far when the sky is gray. The snow's gone now, and so is that supply of Lux Flakes we acquired last fall. Thanks again for making life on one North Dakota farm a little more cheerful in the months just past. To the lady from Dakota, our best wishes for a pleasant summer. She'll find that Lux Flakes, unlike snowflakes, will be just as welcome in the months to come. Now the curtain for suspicion. Starring Joan Fontaine as Lena and Brian Ahern as Johnny with Nigel Bruce as Beaky. Let me go! Let me go! You little fool. What's the matter with you? Let me go! Hilltop overlooking the English countryside. The trees bend low before the moaning wind. Smoke gray clouds weave swiftly across a smoke gray sky. Against the sky are silhouetted the figures of a man and a woman. The man's arms are about her shoulders. She struggles wildly, fiercely, then breaks away. Again his arms reach out. Her hands are caught and held as in a vice. Now, what did you think I was trying to do? Kill you? <laughs> Nothing less than murder could justify such a violent self-defense. Why, look at you. Let me go. Oh, I'm beginning to understand. You thought I was going to kiss you, didn't you? Weren't you? Well, of course not. I was merely reaching around you, trying to fix your hair. What's wrong with my hair? I'm glad you asked me that. It would have been extremely discourteous for me to bring the subject up. Are you serious? <laughs> of course I'm serious. You... you always give me the feeling that you're laughing at me. No, no, I give you my word. Well, what's wrong with my hair? Let me show you. No, 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 no. Don't back away. I'm not going to hurt you. Now, let me see. Yes, yes, this will do it. <laughs> what are you thinking of? A week ago, I'd never even seen you. <laughs> and now, here we are on a Sunday morning, missing church, while I unbraid your hair. <laughs> I think you've done enough fooling with my hair. There we are. Have you got a mirror? You look splendid. I must be quite a novelty by contrast to the women you're photographed with mm? in the newspapers. Oh. Well, well, how do you like your hair? Oh, Nan, don't screw up your face like that. You look like a monkey. <laughs> what does your family call you? Monkey face? I have to go now. I'll be late for luncheon. Anyway, if my father saw me come home both late and beautiful, he might have a stroke. Are you sure Miss Lena isn't in her room, Burton? I knocked, sir, just before I announced luncheon. She said she was going to church. Try again, Burton. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, what were you saying just before, my dear? About Lena. I do wish she'd get married, Stanley. Mm, I don't believe Lena will ever marry. She's not the marrying sort. Oh, I suppose you're right. She is rather spinsterish. What's wrong with that? The old maid's a respectable institution, and all women are not alike. 
Lena has intellect and a fine, solid character. Sorry I'm late. Oh, Lena, dear. Come and sit down. Uh, uh, Lena? What kept you so long at church, dear? I didn't go to church. I went for a walk. A walk? With a man. A man? Yes. His name's John Aysgarth. John Aysgarth? Is that Tom Aysgarth's boy? How did you meet him? Pity he's turned out so wild. Rough luck on Tom. What do you mean? Well, he was turned out of some club for cheating at cards, wasn't he? I don't know. I didn't ask him. What's he doing down here? Well, he's staying at Penn's Hayes. I, I shouldn't have thought Lord Middleham would have had him there if he'd ever been turned out of a club for cheating. Well, perhaps it wasn't Garth. May have been a woman. He was correspondent or something, I believe. Or ought to have been correspondent. Well, anyway, I'm going to see him again this afternoon. He's calling for me at three. Miss Lena, you're wanted on the telephone. Oh, oh thank you, Burton. Stanley. She seems quite excited. You Hello. Oh, hello, Johnny. What? <laughs> yes, a long time ago. Oh, when are you coming? Oh, oh you can't. Yes, of course I understand. Yes, please write and thank you for calling. Goodbye. Hello. Yes, this is Miss McNeil Law. A telegram? W will you read it, please? I will see you, yes. Thursday, yes, at Beecham Hunt Ball. Sign Johnny. Yes, I have it. Oh, Johnny. <laughs> I believe this is our dance, isn't it? <laughs> Hello, monkey face. <laughs> Hello. Hello, monkey face. Hello, Johnny. <laughs> come on, come on. We're getting out of here. <laughs> oh, but we can't. Oh, of course we can. This way, monkey we, face. Uh, Johnny, where are we going? Now then, which is your car? Oh, but this is ridiculous. It's uh, um, over there. Good. Come on. Tell me, have you ever been kissed in a car before? Ah, uh, Johnny. Johnny what? Well, you mustn't joke with me. I'm no good at joking. I... I don't know how to flirt. Well, I'm not joking. I'm serious. Have you ever been kissed in a car? No. Mm -hmm. Would you like to be? Yes. Well, you're the first woman I've ever met who says yes when she meant yes. What do the others say? Oh, hanged if I know. Anything but yes. <laughs> but they kiss you? Well, usually. Um, have there been... Have there been what, monkey face? <laughs> well, uh, have there been many? I'm afraid so. Quite a few. Are you always frank with him like this? No, no, not particularly. Well, then why are you frank with me? Because I'm, I'm different. Oh, no, it isn't that. I'm honest with you because, uh, well, because I think it's the best way to get results. Johnny, I hope I'm not saying the wrong thing, but I love you. No. No, you haven't said the wrong thing, monkey face. I think I'm falling in love with you, too. That's why I stayed away for a week. I was afraid of you. I never thought it would happen like this. Oh, neither did I. Dear mother and father, Johnny and I were married last night. Married? We're off for a month's honeymoon on the continent. Please forgive me. I love him very much. Johnny. <laughs> There, thank you. Uh, the trunk goes up on the landing. Well, darling, how do you like your new house? Oh, darling! <laughs> because if you don't like it, just blame it all on Mr. Bailey here. He rented the house while we were on our honeymoon. <laughs> yes, sir. Why, he even decorated the place. <laughs> oh, I do. Oh, Mr. Aysgarth, I shall have to be getting along now, so uh, what shall I do about the bill? Oh, um, just drop it on that pretty little table on your way out, old boy. Oh, yes, thank you, Mr. Aysgarth. Thank you, Mr. Bailey. <laughs> Johnny, I never dreamt I'd ever have such a gorgeous place. Are you sure you can afford it? Here, here, look. <laughs> Just press that button there on the photograph. There we are. Oh. I dance, I believe. Oh, yes. <laughs> where are we? At the Hunt Ball. And where else? In Venice. And? And Naples and Capri and Monte Carlo and Nice. And? And Paris. Paris. I beg your pardon, sir. Yes? Oh, oh, darling. This is, um... I'm so sorry, I've forgotten your name. Ethel, sir. Oh, yes. Well, Ethel, what is it? A telegram for you, oh, sir. thank you, Ethel. Yes, sir. What do you think of Ethel? Oh, she seems perfect. Oh, hmm. Oh, it isn't bad news, is it, dear? No, oh, oh, no, no. It, it's from an old friend of mine. Stupid fella. He wants a thousand pounds. 
Uh, you couldn't spare a thousand, could you? A thousand? What does he want it for? Oh, hanged if I know. <laughs> Probably because I borrowed it from him. You borrowed it? Why? Because I was going on a honeymoon with the loveliest girl in the world, and I wanted her to be happy. D d didn't you have any money of your own? Well, no, not a shilling. But I, I thought I, I had the impression... Johnny, are you... Are, are you broke? Monkey face, I've been broke all my life. But why didn't you tell me, and what, whatever made you take this extravagant house? Well, I didn't want you to live in a shack. <laughs> why, a girl like you who's going to come into plenty of money someday? Oh, wait a minute, I, I can't quite get this into my head. Were you thinking of my inheritance? Oh, I, oh, I don't know what to say. Oh, now, darling, really, isn't it silly to spend the best years of our lives waiting? Why not be comfortable now? Johnny, I'm just beginning to understand you. You're a baby. Oh, I know you didn't marry me for my money, but my income will never pay for all this, never. But what about your father? Well, I couldn't possibly ask my father or even mother. Anyway, you wouldn't actually want to live on your wife's allowance, would you? Of course not, darling. Well, then. Well? Well, I suppose if the worst comes to the worst and there were no other way out of it, well, I suppose I'd have to... What? Well... Borrow some more. I haven't touched old Middleham yet. Why, he ought to be good for a month or two's housekeeping. I think you must be mad. Oh, darling, Johnny, let's not... Johnny, listen to me. Well? There's going to be no more borrowing. Well, what else is there to do? You've got to go to work. Work? Yes, work. What, you mean put on old clothes and, and go out with a shovel? <laughs> Don't be flippant. Well, what do you mean? Well, do you realize that in order to be a plumber or a carpenter or an electrician... Oh, darling, you just haven't been around. There are all sorts of jobs, Johnny. Well, I'm broad-minded. Let's have some tea and talk it over. We can make out a list of jobs. Why, it might be fun. <laughs> hello, who's that, I wonder? There it is, right behind you, darling. Hello? Oh, hello, Mother. Oh, yes, yes, it, it's, it's wonderful. A most beautiful house. And, uh, oh, would you tell Father how badly I felt? And... Oh, is he? Oh, oh, wait, wait a minute, now tell Johnny. Johnny! Huh? Father is sending us a wedding present. No! Oh, I can't tell you how much this means to me. Oh, me too. Yes, Father, yes? Go on, go on, ask him when he's sending Shh, it. Shh, it's coming over right away by well, messenger. Well, well, invite them over for dinner. And if you can slip it in, just say that we were in the throes of job hunting when he telephoned. Johnny, really, you are the limit. What, Father? Oh, oh yes, uh, Johnny and I were just discussing that very subject, and he has several interesting ideas of the kind of job he'd like to do with. Oh, Mr. Aesgar, there's a messenger from General McLeadlaw. Oh, it's just come, Father. Hold on. Bring it in, Ethel. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I think I know what it is, and... Oh, Johnny, you'll be thrilled. In here, please. Oh, it is... Oh, how wonderful, Johnny, look! What the... Yeah, well, what, what is that thing? It's a chair, darling, a Queen Anne chair. Ah. Here's another one, ma'am. Yeah, how many more, for heaven's sake? Just these two, sir. Oh, he sent us both of them. Oh, Johnny, these are our first he heirlooms to be handed down to our children and, and then to their children. Ah, that's the thing to do with them, all right. Oh, well, I must tell him. Oh, Father, <laughs> you're, you're so good to me that it, it makes me want to cry. You, you've made me so very happy, and, and you've made Johnny very happy, too. Oh, yes. Uh, wait a minute, Father. He wants to say something what? to you. No, him. no, no, I don't. Say something no. very nice. These chairs yeah. really belong in a museum. Now, go on. Hello, General. Yes. Oh, but really, sir, shouldn't you have sent them to a museum? <laughs> oh, but of course we're thrilled, yes. Uh, what? A job. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Lena and I were just going into that... Well, I, I have several excellent opportunities. I've just had a letter from my cousin, Captain Melbeck. He uh, he wants somebody to manage his estate for him, you know. I, I thought I'd take the job. Yes, well, I'm glad you approve, sir. Yes. Well, we'll get together soon. Goodbye, sir. That was a fib about Captain Melbeck, wasn't it? Was it? Listen to this letter. We'll give your idea the fullest consideration. Let me know if you would like to take the job. Yours sincerely, George Melbeck. Did you have this letter all the time? I did. Why didn't you tell me? Because, dear, I never dreamed I'd be using it. Any more than I ever dreamed we'd be receiving these two beautiful chairs. Oh, good afternoon, ma'am. Hello, Ethel. Is Mr. Aysgarth at home yet? No, ma'am. There's a gentleman waiting for him in the drawing room. Oh, oh thank you. Hello. 
I say, a nice place old Johnny's got here. Oh, yes, I'm, I'm Beaky Thwaite. You must be old Johnny's wife. Yes, I am. Well, didn't, didn't he ever tell you about me? Beaky? Oh, you're Beaky. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they used to sco- call me at school. I happened to be driving by. I thought I'd just pop in for a cup of tea. Oh, I've heard so much about you, Mr. Thwaite. Yes, Johnny told me about you, too. I ran into him at Newbury Races last week. The races? Oh, oh put my foot in it as usual, have I? I mean, didn't he... Didn't he tell you? Johnny has a job. He, he couldn't be at the races. Besides, he's, he's given up betting. Oh, yes, is he? Well, don't you believe it. Not Johnny. He's a great lad, he is. You mustn't mind Johnny cutting up. That's what makes him Johnny. Besides, he thinks you're a topper. Won't you sit down, Mr. Thwaite? Oh, I don't see why not. Well, I'm sure Johnny... W- Oh. Something wrong? Yes, there there were two chairs here this morning before I left. Chairs? Disappeared ever? Yes, apparently. Were they uh, were they expensive? Yes, they were. They were museum pieces. Queen Anne. <laughs> that Johnny, you be the death of me. <laughs> don't, don't you understand? No, I don't. I'll bet you twenty to one that old Johnny sold them. Sold them? What for? For money, of course. The fellow's got to pay his racing debts, hasn't he? <laughs> you know, those bookie fellas, they don't trust a chap for long. Not a chap like Johnny, that is. I don't believe you. I don't believe a word you're saying. Oh, put my foot in again, huh? Oh, he, he couldn't have sold them. He wouldn't, without asking me. This is very dark, the whole way Yes, sir. Here he comes. I don't tell him I've said a word. If you want to see Johnny, it is very best. You just say something about chairs. Beaky! Johnny! <laughs> how are you all being? Fine! Well, 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 what are you doing here? I just popped in to see you, boy. Good. Well, how's my little monkey face? Hmm? I don't know. What's the matter, darling? Nothing. Are what? you sure? Your, um, your wife seems to be missing some chairs, old boy. Beaky, uh, your pipe's not lit. Here, let me give you a match. Oh, thanks, old boy. About those chairs, old bean. Huh? The, uh, the missing chairs, old man. Uh, what? Oh, oh, yes. yes. Oh, the chairs, yes. Oh, I suppose that American must have come for them this morning. What American? Oh, didn't I tell you, darling? Stupid of me. Well, he, uh, he dropped by about a week ago, a friend of Melbeck's. Gone, over. Well, anyway, he admired the chairs and offered a hundred apiece for them. <laughs> Anyone would take that. I wouldn't. Oh, wouldn't you really, dear? Oh, well, I'm sorry, that never occurred to me. Uh, why, why didn't you mention it? Well, I'm sorry, darling, I thought I did. Oh, well, <laughs> that's all right. If they're gone, they're gone. Yeah, they're gone, all right. Shall we change for dinner? Uh, you're an angel. Here, hold on a minute. You say that he offered you a hundred apiece for him? That's right. Well, let's have a look at the check. Oh, he'll send it along. I'll bet you ten pounds to a shilling you wouldn't dare let your wife pick up the telephone and, and ask old Melbick or whatever his name is if he ever saw this American. Are you implying that my husband is, is a liar, Mr. Thwaite? Oh, now, monkey face, don't mind Beaky. He's only joking. Well, I prefer jokes on other subjects. Um, are you staying for dinner, Mr. Thwaite? Dinner? I'm spending the weekend, unless you throw me out. Johnny's friends are always welcome, as long as they remain Johnny's friends. Mr. DeMille presents Act Two of Suspicion, starring Joan Fontaine, Brian Ahern, and Nigel Bruce, in just a moment. Now, here's a last-time announcement about the Lux Flakes Garden Club. Yes, this is the last time we can tell you on the air about our wonderful flower bargain. Three hardy, vitamin-treated chrysanthemum plants. A whole dollar's worth for only ten cents and the opening tab from a large box of Lux Flakes. Single and double chrysanthemums, pom-pom and button types, in all their full range of glorious color, are included in our offer. Some will grow as big as three or four inches across. Plant them now, and from early next fall right up until killing frost time, you'll have armloads of blossoms, dozens from each plant to cut and arrange indoors at a cost of almost nothing. These Lux Mum plants are all first-quality, well-rooted, field-grown plants. They'll bloom year after year, and one in each set of three, the feature mum, blooms in a soft, glowing shell pink color that's specially lovely indoors under artificial light. And an extra special feature of our offer, every one of our plants has been given a special vitamin treatment with transplantone to strengthen the roots and produce earlier and more perfect blossoms. Now, even though you haven't a garden, you can still enjoy the luxury of fresh flowers for your home. For these Lux chrysanthemum plants will thrive in flower pots or window boxes in any Sunday window. 
Order as many sets of three plants as you want, but order them promptly. Don't forget, this is the last time you will hear this premium offer. So get your order in the mail right away. If not tonight, then tomorrow, if you possibly can do so. But by all means, send it not later than next Sunday, May 10th, as this radio offer expires on that date, May 10th. Because of the tremendous rush of orders, we ask you to allow at least two weeks for your plants to reach you. Now, here's what you do. Write your name and address on a piece of paper or on the handy order blank which your dealer has. Mail it with 10 cents in coin. No stamps, please. 10 cents in coin and the opening tab from a large box of Lux Flakes to Lux Garden Club, Hollywood, California. With your chrysanthemum plants, we'll send you a leaflet of planting instructions and another leaflet telling you how you can get several other flower bargains. Remember, for each set of three plants you order, send 10 cents in coin and the opening tab from a large box of Lux Flakes to Lux Garden Club, Hollywood, California. Be sure to include your own name and address, of course. The offer is good only in the United States. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act two of Suspicion, starring Joan Fontaine as Lena and Brian Ahern as Johnny, with Nigel Bruce as Beaky. A week has passed, but in Lena's mind, there's still a dim shadow of doubt, a faint indefinable fear, the dawning of suspicion. Now in a, the quiet main street of the town, she meets the local celebrity, a writer of mystery stories. Lena, dear. Oh, hello, Isabel. I've just been admiring your display in the bookshop. Murder on the footbridge. Yes, they're doing very nicely by it. How's Johnny? Oh, he's fine. He's an ardent admirer of yours. I don't believe there's one of your stories he hasn't read. Splendid. By the way, have you seen Telbrook's window? The antique shop? No, not lately. Well, my dear, they've got the most beautiful things. Two lovely old Queen Anne chairs. I'd give my soul to own them. Chairs? Lovely. Oh, goodbye, my dear. See you for dinner soon. Yes, of course. I'll phone you, Lena. The chairs. He said he sold them to an American... He lied to me. Why? Why did he lie to me? Hello, old girl. Back so soon? Beaky, I owe you an apology. Good. I mean, uh, what for? Well, I'll explain to you later. I say, you seem to be a little hot under the collar. Must be about old Johnny. Would you excuse me? My dear, you, you mustn't be angry with Johnny. It's a waste of time. Now, if you want to get sore with me, it's a different thing altogether. I know everybody always did. Lena! Beaky! Beaky! Where are you? Where are you? <laughs> oh, hello, hello, hello. Now then, don't move either one of you. Just stay like that. <laughs> I must watch the expressions on your faces. <laughs> I say, what have you got in those packages, old Beaky? <laughs> You'll find out soon enough. Oh, Beaky, this is a red letter day. Lena, Lena, look. Do you remember that little necklace you admired in the shop window in Regent Street? Yeah. I say. <laughs> Beaky, here's a little present for you. Obie. What is it, Obie? Oh, oh, stick. Thanks, Obie. Darling, do you remember this fur coat? I saw the hungry eye you gave it the last time we were up in London. <laughs> well, it's yours. What do you say? Johnny, I, I don't understand what made you do all this. Oh, now, dear, don't be angry. Well, Johnny, I want to know what this is all about. Yes, what is it all about, Obie? Well, my friends, I have the pleasure of announcing that the Goodwood Cup was run today, and I happen to have backed the winner. A ten-to-one shot, ladies and gentlemen. And I had 200 pounds on him. 200 <laughs> pounds at ten-to-one? Well, that's 2,000 quid. Darling, what's happened to your tongue? Oh, come on, darling, smile. Johnny... Where did you get the 200 pounds? I say, oh, girl, that's not a very tactful question. Where did you get it? Oh, you know very well there was no American. I got it for the chairs, of course. You sold the chairs to gamble all your money on a horse? Well, not exactly. I owed the bookies some money, but uh, then along came this hot tip. Oh, darling, come on, give us a smile. Yes, oh. come on, old girl, come. Oh, I know. What? You tickle a chin, I'll make a noise like a duck. <laughs> <laughs> come on, old man, more duck, more duck. More duck, Obie. <laughs> No, no, it's no good, Beaky. No. Oh, oh, I forgot something. Darling, look at this. It's a receipt from a certain antique shop. Paid in full for a certain pair of chairs. They'll deliver within the hour. Johnny. There, there, you see? She's smiling. Hi, Julia, so she is. Oh, Johnny, darling. <laughs> well done, old Beaky. I say, 
What about celebrating? Oh, trust old Beaky to say the right thing at the right time. <laughs> Come on, darling, look at me. Are you happy? Yes. Of course she is. Here, here you are, Lena. This, this is yours, old girl. Thank you, Beaky. And, and here's yours, old Bean. Ah. And, uh, and now for a, for a toast. Now, wait a minute, Beaky. What are you drinking? Brandy? Oh, just, just this once, old Bean. Now, you know that's not good for you. All right. Oh, well, maybe just this once. Oh, thanks, Obin. Monkey face, I drink to the last bet that will ever be made by Johnny Aesgar. The last bet, Obin. Well, bottoms up. <coughs> Beaky. What's the matter with him? Sit down, Beaky, sit down. Here. Don't, don't get some water quick. It won't help. I've seen this happen before. There's nothing much you can do about it. Well, open his collar, he can't breathe. That's no use, darling. It'll either kill him or it'll go away by itself. Sorry, Obin. One of these days, it'll kill him. Oh, good afternoon, Mrs. Aysgar. Good afternoon. Is my husband in his office? Mr. Aysgar? Why, no. When do you expect him? Well, I, I really couldn't say. Perhaps you'd like to talk to Captain Melbeck. Yes, I would. Very much, please. This way. Mrs. Aysgar to see you, sir. Oh, come in. Mrs. Aysgarth, what a pleasure to see you. Good afternoon, Captain Melvin. Well, do sit down. Well, I, I don't want to impose upon you, but you're Johnny's cousin as well as his employer, and I, well, I thought I'd come and see you. Well, of course. I've been feeling pretty badly about Johnny ever since I had to discharge him. Discharge? Well, don't worry, Mrs. Aysgarth. I told him I wouldn't prosecute. But, uh, I don't understand. I told him I wouldn't prosecute. What on earth are you talking about? When did you discharge him? Oh, six weeks ago. We had an unexpected audit, and the accounts showed a deficit of 2,000 pounds. When I looked into Johnny's records, well, I'm terribly sorry, Mrs. Aysgarth. He should have told you. Johnny, I am leaving you. It is very important that we never see each other again. Lena. Yes? Oh, Ethel told me she'd packed your grips. Uh, yes. Oh, then, uh, then you've heard, eh? Yes, I've heard. I'm so sorry, darling. I'm terribly sorry. This telegram just came from the doctor. It tells how it happened. Telegram? There aren't many details. I deeply regret your father died early this morning from heart failure. Your mother wishes you to come at once. <laughs> Lena. <laughs> Tired, darling? Mm, a little. It's been a nasty week for you. I'll be glad to get you home. Lena, do you ever have any regrets that you married me? Why do you ask that? Seems pretty obvious that your father would have left you a lot more than his portrait if you'd been anybody else but Mrs. John Aysgar. Oh, is, is that what you meant? You haven't answered my question. What about you? Have you any regrets? Monkey face. Marrying you is the one thing I've never changed my mind about. Do you really mean that, John? Yes, I really mean that. What about you? Oh, I... Oh, I couldn't stop loving you if I tried. Have you tried? Yes, once. When? When I found out you'd lost your job with Captain Melbeck. How long have you known? Since last Friday. Who told you? Captain Melbeck. I, I met him. Did he tell you why? No. Suppose you tell me why. Oh. Oh, well, we, uh, we just didn't get along. Say, it's quite nice here. Shall we stop and have a look at the sea? Pretty, isn't it? Gee, it'd be quite a drop off this cliff, wouldn't it? Why didn't you get along with Captain Melby? Oh, I don't know. He's a bit of an old fogey, you know. Monkey face, the way to make money is to think in a big way. Now, 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 now look at all this land, for instance. Look at the view from these cliffs. Now, why isn't something done about it? You know, if I had 10,000 pounds, or still better, 20,000, I, I could start a development here. All you need is 20,000 pounds. 20,000 pounds, that's all I'd need. 20,000 pounds, eh? You think we could swing it for that, Obin? Well, of course. Now, you see, Beaky, this is the ground plan. That's wonderful, Obin. Then we could put the large hotel up here on the cliff, eh? That's the idea. Hello, <laughs> hello. What's going on in here, hmm? Oh, oh, monkey face. 
Uh, we're, um, we're organizing a real estate company. We're about to buy a very beautiful piece of land right by the sea. What a view. What sun. What air. And then we sell part of it at a profit. Oh, I see. But you'll need financing for all this. Of course. Well, have you found someone to put up the money? Of course. Who? Me? Oh, I see. Well, the, uh, the idea's mine, but the, uh, the money's Beaky's. <laughs> and the corporation, well, uh, Beaky's going to borrow against some securities he has in Paris. Yes, but... It... Oh, look, darling, let me show you how simple it is. Does Beaky understand it? Oh, perfectly. I think. I beg your pardon, Mr. Aysgarth. Yes, Ethel? You're wanted on the phone, sir. Oh, thank you. Oh, excuse me. Being... Yes, right over. Now, Beaky, please explain it to me, will you? Well, you see, my dear girl, well, well you see, uh, we, uh, we buy up this land and then we sell part of it. That gives us a 100% profit in no time. Then, then on the other part, we, uh, well, we, we, we build something or other. Oh, yes, but from whom do you buy the land? To whom do you sell it? Well, that shouldn't be difficult, do you think? Beaky, isn't it about time you grew up? I say, old girl, you're, you're scolding me. Yes, you need a scolding. Shall I go and stand in the corner? Oh, Beaky, you're not being fair to Johnny. I say, old girl, that's a bit thick. Why, he's president of the whole bad of the thing, which he gets a salary... Writes his own checks? Yes, that's what I mean. Oh, well, what's wrong with that? Yes, what is wrong with it? Well, Lena? I say, oh, Lena's telling me that you're a bit soft in the head. Is that it? Sounded like that to me. Yeah, hadn't you better be changing for dinner? Oh, right over. I shan't be a jiffy. What right have you to interfere in my affairs? But I, I wasn't really. I was only... You were only what? Well, I, I was only trying to tell Biggie that he shouldn't leave everything to you. It's, it's not as if you were both experienced businessmen. What the devil do you know about business? Oh, very little. Suppose Biggie had taken you seriously. You, you'd have ruined the whole scheme. Do you realize that? Yes, but if it weren't good... That's my business, not yours. If I say it's good, it's good. And I don't want any interference from you or anybody else. Is that clear? Yes, that's clear. <laughs> Yes, who is it? Yes, darling? Oh, I, uh, I thought you might like to know. I, I'm uh, calling off that real estate plan. Why? What happened? Oh, I don't know. Perhaps the land isn't any good, or perhaps I don't like the idea of risking Beaky's money, or, or perhaps it's a stiff job, and, and I'm just too lazy. <laughs> it is, but every time I play anagrams, I, I can only make three-letter words. D-O-U-B. D-O-U-B is no such word. <laughs> Try this. D-O-U-B-T. Doubt. Oh, thanks, old girl. I said, Johnny, I don't see why you want to call off this real estate business. It's no good. But the corporation's formed already. The money's been put up in your name, old boy. The deal is off, Beaky. Uh, well, why do we have to drive all the way up there to, to look at it? I won't be responsible for calling the scheme off without first proving to you that it's no good. So we're going up to the cliffs early tomorrow morning and take a look. Well, why are you so insistent? Because, as I told you, I won't be responsible. Oh, all right, old boy. I say, what's that you've got there, Lena? M-U-D-D-E-R. <laughs> it's no such word, is it? Try the R in, instead of the D. M-U-R-D-E-R. Murder. <laughs> That's more like it. Murder. Okay, Johnny, I don't like going up there in, in the morning. Well, why do we have to go up so early? Now, Beaky. Murder. Oh, well, if we have to, well, let's get on with the game. It's your turn, old girl. The money in his name. Murder. The cliffs overlooking the sea. I say, Lena. The edge of the cliff. Stay away, Beaky. Lena, I say. You push him off, you kill you. Murder, murder. Murder. Lena, what's the matter? Lena. Here, give me a hand here, Beaky. She's fainted. <laughs> What time did Mr. Aysgarth leave? Why, about seven, ma'am. And Mr. Thwaite went with him? Yes, ma'am. Well, why didn't you wake me? Well, Mr. Aysgarth said not to disturb you. What car did they use? Well, ma'am, I... What I car? Which one? Listen. Oh, that's Mr. Aysgarth now, ma'am. He's back. He's come back. Hello, hello. Oh, morning, Lena. Johnny. You feeling better? Oh, what's the matter? You're as white as a sheet. Where? Where's Beaky? What? Hello, old girl. How are you feeling? Oh. Any better? Oh, Lena, what is it? Oh, Johnny. Oh, 
darling, I'm so glad I... Oh, well, 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 well. What is all this? Why, well, I've only been away a few hours. <laughs> it seems like a thousand years. Yeah, it seems like that to me, too. Oh, shut up, Beaky. It was nothing. Nothing? I came very near to losing my life. <laughs> Do you call that nothing? You nearly lost your life. Came very close to it. Oh, let's drop the subject. No, go on, Beaky. I, w- I want to hear about it. Well, there we were on the top of the cliff. I was trying to turn my car near the edge. Was Johnny in the car? No, 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 no. He was a few feet away. Go on. Well, I didn't realize that I was backing the car right towards the edge, but I was. And if old Johnny hadn't taken a flying leap and grabbed the brake, I should have been in kingdom come by now. Johnny saved your life. Johnny. Oh, I I can never tell you how much this means to me. To you, darling. Yes, it means a good bit to me, too. The old fellow deserves a reward. I say, how how about a night out? A spot of celebrating on me, Aubin. Very kind of you, Beaky, but don't you have to go to Paris? Paris? Oh, yes, yes, of course, so I do. My security's over there. I've got to go over and cancel the arrangements for them. I say, why don't you come over with me? (laughs) Why, the cad seems to forget that I'm a married man. (laughs) I'll tell you what I might do, Beaky. I might drive up to London with you. Hey, how about that monkey face? Yes, monkey, I mean, Lena, do, do let him come. Well, it seems to me... Yes, I know. It seems to you that I should be looking for a job. Well, it seems to me I'll have much more chance of getting a job in London than I would anywhere around yes, here. Yes, of course he would. I say, do let him come, Lena. Well, I don't see very well how I can stop him. Good hey! Hey! <laughs> Mrs. Esgar. Yes, Ethel? There's an Inspector Hodgson in the hall, ma'am. He wants to speak to Mr. Esgar. Show him in, Ethel. Very good, ma'am. Will you come this way, please, sir? Thank you. Mrs. Aysgarth? Yes? My name's Hodgson, Inspector Hodgson from the county police. Oh, how do you do? I understand your husband's not in, ma'am. Uh, no, he's been in, up in London for two days. Well, perhaps you might be able to help us. Yes, of course. I believe you know a Mr. Thwaite. Yes, he's a close friend of my husband's. Well, I don't know how to put it quite. Perhaps it would be easier if I showed you this in this afternoon's paper. Right here, ma'am. Englishman found dead. An Englishman met with a mysterious death in a house in Paris. He's believed to be Mr. Gordon Cochrane Thwaite of... Beaky. I'm sorry to have to do this, ma'am, but we're making inquiries on behalf of the Paris police. They found some papers on Mr. Thwaite's person which indicated he just formed a corporation with your husband. What... what do the French police think caused the death? Well, this is a copy of a telegram that we received from Paris. Thwaite visited the place in the company of another Englishman. On arrival, Thwaite ordered a bottle of brandy. Brandy? According to the statement of one of the waiters, Thwaite's companion asked for the brandy to be served in large beakers. Apparently, as a result of a bet between the two men, Thwaite filled one of these beakers to the brim and drank it all. The other man was not present when the actual tragedy happened. I'm sorry to upset you, ma'am, but do you or your husband happen to know of any friend of Mr. Thwaite's who might have been there with him? No. Then perhaps you could enlighten us about this corporation. Yes, I believe I can. My husband had planned a real estate development with him, and Mr. Thwaite had gone to Paris to dissolve the corporation. Thank you, ma'am. That's all. Good day. Good day. He didn't go to Paris. He's in London. John is in London. He's at the club. He's got to be at the club. He didn't go to Paris. He didn't. Hello? Hogarth Club? May I... May I speak to Mr. Aysgarth, please? He left? He left when? Yesterday morning. No, no, it doesn't matter. Thank you. Murder. Murder! Pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. After a brief intermission, Mr. DeMille returns with Joan Fontaine and Brian Ahern for the third act of Suspicion. Meantime... Hey, Mr. Ruick, do you know how Mother Goose did her dishwashing? Well, it sounds like a gag to me, Sally, but go ahead. Well, it was very easy. 
She made everyone eat with a spoon. And when they were all through eating, why... Why, the dish ran away with the spoon. <laughs> now, Sally. <laughs> why, it was a wonderful system. Quick, easy, no dishpan hands. But you couldn't exactly call it thrifty, Sally. There's no record that the dishes and spoons ever ran back again. Now, I can tell you a way to wash dishes that saves you from dishpan hands and is thrifty, too. The Lux Flakes way. You're right, Mr. Ruick. Scores of tests have proved how gentle Lux is, have shown that hands, reddened and roughened by strong soaps in the dishpan, grew lovely again after changing to Lux Flakes. Yes, simply changing to Lux took away that red, rough look without the use of any creams or lotions. And New Quick Lux goes further, gives you more suds, ounce for ounce, even in hard water, than any of ten other soaps tested. It's very thrifty. So you needn't have red dishpan hands. You save your hands when you wash dishes the thrifty Lux soap way. Get the generous big box first thing tomorrow morning and use it for your dishes every day. One big box of New Quick Lux will do dishes for about 45 meals. Now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. The curtain rises on the third act of Suspicion, starring Joan Fontaine and Brian Ahern. In Lena's mind, the sharp sting of suspicion has given way to the dull, sickening ache of certainty. Certainty that her husband is a murderer. Returning to the house, he stands framed in the doorway, looking at her. She turns toward him with fear in her eyes. You've read about Beaky, have you? I was terribly fond of Beaky. Were you? Yes, I loved that silly, generous, good-hearted fool. Did you? Of course I did. Next to you, I loved him more than anybody in the world. Next to me? Oh, oh poor monkey face. Here I am thinking only of myself and forgetting about you. You liked him too, didn't you? I liked him very much. The police were here. The police? What did they want? They wanted you to help them. It seems there was an Englishman who made a... a, a bet. Yes, I know. And the whole story was in the late edition. What else? The inspector wants you to phone him. He, he thought perhaps you could help identify this Englishman. What did you tell them? Did you mention the corporation? Naturally, I... I told them Beaky was planning to dissolve it. I wish you'd left all that to me. Hello. Uh, Wickstead Police Station, please. What else did you tell them? That's about all. Hello. Uh, hello, Inspector. This is Mr. John Aysgarth. Yes. Uh, yes. Well, I drove up to London with him on Tuesday evening, and we dined at the Savoy. Yes. Well, then I saw him off at Croydon Airport. Oh, no, no. I stayed in London until this afternoon. At my club... How nice to see you. I don't see half as much as you as I'd like. Well, that's sweet of you, Isabel. You know, I couldn't put my light out until three this morning. I was so interested in your last book, and I, I had to come over and talk to you about it. That's the most thrilling compliment I ever got. I was completely fascinated by the way your villain enticed his victim across the footbridge, knowing that the bridge had been sawn through. And he also knew his victim couldn't swim. Don't forget that. Well, what I want to know is this... Uh, would you call that an actual murder? Well, from the moral standpoint, there's no question at all. It is murder. I suppose it is. What does Johnny think? Johnny? Oh, I, I haven't discussed it with him. Oh, I should think he'd be interested. The same situation with this friend of his in Paris. The same? Well, that brandy business is just like my footbridge. By the way, the, this brandy thing isn't new at all, you know. Oh, it's been done before? Oh, yes. And in real life, too. I have it here. A book called The Trial of Richard Palmer. Now, oh, what is that book? Trial of Richard Palmer, The Trial of... Oh, I remember where it is. It's in your house. My house? Yes. Johnny borrowed it a week ago. Hello? Hello. Uh, may I speak to Mr. Aysgarth, please? Well, he isn't in. This is Mrs. Aysgarth speaking. Oh, uh, well, this is the Garantor's Life Insurance Company. Yes? Would you tell Mr. Aysgarth that there's been a slight delay in replying to his inquiry? But we've written him fully on the matter, and he should get our letter by first post in the morning. Dear sir, replying to your inquiry regarding a loan of £5,000 against your wife's insurance policy, 
We regret to state that such a loan cannot be granted. According to the terms of the policy, payment can only be made in the event of your wife's death. If you... Morning, dear. Any letters for me? Oh, what's the matter? Nothing. Darling, you're not shivering, are you? I, I have a bit of a chill. Cold in all this sunshine? <laughs> My poor little shivering baby. Oh, um, what are we doing tonight? Um, we're going to Isabel's to dine. Oh, what a bore. Well, let's get back to that new book of yours, Isabel. You mean to tell me that a fellow comes into a room, sits down and starts to strum on the piano, and, uh, and two seconds later he's shot? Is that the idea? Yes. A certain note on the piano was wired to a revolver concealed in the wall panelling. Oh, I don't care much for that, Isabel. You're slipping, old girl. <laughs> What's wrong with it? Oh, it's too complicated. If you're going to kill somebody, just uh, do it simply. How would you do it simply, Johnny? Oh, I don't know, dear. Just use the most obvious method. For instance? Well, for instance, poison, say, uh, arsenic. Arsenic can be traced in the body, of course. But it isn't always. Hmm, no. This very minute, there are probably hundreds of murderers walking about. Thousands. Johnny, do you suppose those murderers are happy? Oh, I don't know. Why shouldn't they be? Uh, anyway, Isabel, it seems to me that by now, somebody would have discovered a poison that can't be traced. What's that? What about it? Isn't there... An un un untraceable poison? Nonsense. There's no such thing. Isabel, you're hiding something from me. <laughs> Johnny, you're locking up. What about Ethel? Well, it's Ethel's night off. She won't be back till morning. What about Cook? Have you forgotten? Cook's away on holiday. Oh. My darling, you're shivering again. Do you suppose you're catching cold? Yes, I, I think that's what it must be. Oh, well, we'll have to tuck you into bed and get you nice and warm. Come along. No, Johnny, please. Please don't. What's the trouble? Johnny, I, I'm in a state tonight. I, I don't know why, but I'd like to be alone... Would you mind sleeping in your dressing room? Well, of course I'd mind. Please, Johnny, I haven't been sleeping. Oh, I understand. You used to sleep badly when I wasn't here, and now you... Well, all right, if that's the way you feel about it. Good night. Poison. Arsenic. Poison. Untraceable. In the event of your wife's death. Poison. In the event of your wife's death. Your wife's death. Your wife's death. Wake up, dear. You feeling better? Uh, yes, I... Uh... Hello, darling. I Isabel. I came over this morning. We were quite worried about you, Lena. This morning? Have I been sleeping all day? The doctor gave you a pill, darling. That's all you needed. Rest. Here, yeah, I'll run down and tell Ethel to fix something for supper. I'll be right back. <laughs> He's one in a million, that Johnny of yours. Uh, isn't he? I warn you. You'd better get well, because if you leave me alone much longer with him, my career will soon be over. He flirted with you, I suppose. Flirted? <laughs> Worse than that. He's worming all my secrets out of me. Did you tell him anything today? <laughs> Did I? Now, <laughs> honestly, have you ever been able to deny Johnny anything? It was about that poison, wasn't it? Yes, it was. And if he writes a story on that one before I do... Lean, I imagine. A substance in daily use everywhere. Anyone can lay his hands on it, and within a minute after taking, the victim's beautifully out of the way. And mind you, it's undetectable after death. Is whatever it is painful? Not in the least. In fact, I should think it would be a most pleasant death. Lena, are you awake? Yes. Oh, I brought you a glass of milk. Here, darling, I'll put it here. Drink it before you go to sleep. Good night, darling. Why don't you let me help you pack? But there's no need to, I... What's the matter with you this morning? 
You're still annoyed with me, aren't you? No, Johnny, really. I still don't feel well, that's why. And a few days at your mother's will do you more good than staying at home. Oh, not exactly that. Dear mother, telephone she me. She got on that phone awfully early, it seems well, to me. Well, mother gets up early. I, I happened to mention that I, I was a bit nervy, and before I knew it, I'd, I'd agreed to spend a few days with her. Oh, all right. I'll run down and get the car ready. Oh, no, please. I'll drive myself. I prefer to drive you. <laughs> You're going so fast, Johnny. You want to get there, don't you? Well, did you did you have to go by this oh, road? Oh, why not? It's the shortest way, isn't it? Ha! There's the hotel site. That's another thing I failed at. The cliffs. He's going to kill me. That door is open. He's going to kill me. The cam up there, the door was swinging. He's going to push me out. No, no, no. Open. No, no, no. What the... Look out! <laughs> Get your hand off that door. Lena! Let me go, let me go! Lena, Lena, come back! No, no! Lena! Let me Lena, go! Lena, what's got into you? Oh, let me alone. Stop it, stop it, you little fool, stop it! I've had enough. How much do you think a man can bear? Listen, listen to me. You turn me out of your room, you go running away to your mother's, and now you shrink away from me as though you hated me. You're my wife, Lena! But I, I thought... Why, you almost killed us both back there. Because you had to pull away even when I was reaching over to save you from falling out of the car. Well, you don't have to put up with me anymore. Johnny, wait. Where are you going? First, I'm taking you on to your mother's. And then what? Oh, don't you worry. I won't bother you again. Johnny, you mean you're... Go Johnny, why were you asking Isabel about that poison? What were you planning to do with it? Johnny, you're going to kill yourself. Oh, my darling. Yes. But I saw that was a cheap way out. So I'm going back to see it through. Prison term and everything. Prison? You mean no back? That money you... I can't pay it back. I made the last attempt to raise the money when I went away with Beaky. To Paris. Paris? I didn't go to Paris. I went to Liverpool. I tried to borrow on your insurance. But it didn't work. You mean you were in Liverpool when Beaky... Then you didn't go to Paris. Well, of course not. Do you think I'd have let some idiot give poor old Beaky that brandy if I had? Oh, Johnny... If only I'd known. I was thinking only of myself, not of what you were going through. Oh, if I'd been really close to you, you, you could have confided in me, but you were ashamed to. Oh, if I'd only understood. Oh, Johnny, it will be different now. We'll make it different. People don't change overnight, Lena. I'm no good. Oh, let's turn back, Johnny. Let's go home and see it through together. No, it won't work. Oh, it will work. I know it will. Johnny, please, you can't shut me out. Turn the car around and let's go home. Please, Johnny. Get in the car. Johnny, where are we going? We're turning back. We're going home. Our stars will return to the microphone in just a moment for a curtain call. Meantime, some news of interest to women about the new rayon stockings that stores are featuring today. You know, these new rayons have greater elasticity and greater strength than earlier ones. New finishes make them more beautiful, too. Of course, you'll need to give these new rayons the right care for best results. Rayon is temporarily weak in water, so handle it gently. Don't rub. Don't use strong wash day soaps. Just squeeze lukewarm Lux suds through the stockings, then rinse, just as you do with silk and nylon. Roll the stockings for a moment in a Turkish towel to press out the moisture. Then unroll them at once and hang them over a smooth rod. Always be sure you get rayon stockings really dry before you wear them again. Let them dry from 24 to 48 hours. This is important. Because even though the stockings may feel dry before this time, the inside of the rayon threads may still be damp, and rayon regains its natural strength only when thoroughly dry. You'll find this easy Lux way pays big dividends in cutting down runs and giving you long wear from these lovely new stockings. Now, here's Mr. DeMille with our stars. It's no secret to most of you that in private life, 
Our stars are Mr. and Mrs. Brian Ahern. And it's no secret to any of you that they gave a fine performance tonight in Suspicion. Oh, thank you very much, C.B. Joan has been looking forward to weeks to her first visit to the Lux Radio Theatre. And to playing opposite Brian, too, Mr. DeMille. Mm, sounds as though she married you because she admired your acting, Brian. <laughs> well, that's the best review I've had yet, C.B. <laughs> Confidentially, though, I married Joan for her Academy Award. <laughs> I had a suspicion she had win it. Ooh. <laughs> I think you'd better buy an extra war bond this week, Brian, for a pun like that. <laughs> Definitely. What's the news on the front of, on Hollywood's all-out battle of bonds, Mr. DeMille? I was talking with headquarters just today, John. And the noon communique is, we're advancing on all fronts. The goal for the entire industry, you know, is 10% or more of everyone's income for war bonds. That should buy a lot of tanks and planes, C.B. About $300,000 worth a week, Brian. Perhaps 100 bombers a year will be paid for by bonds Hollywood will buy through our voluntary payroll savings plan. And that doesn't count our regular cash sales of bonds, either. It sounds like a system that every business might adopt, Mr. DeMille. How is it organized? The Motion Picture Committee for Hollywood was formed at the request of the Treasury Department to represent every part of the motion picture industry, labor, management, and creative branches. The producer with four telephones and three secretaries is no more important than the carpenter who builds the set or the electrician who lights it. We need everybody. You know, at a meeting the other day, the two best suggestions were made by a lovely extra girl who just come from the set in makeup and a man who just come from the same set in overalls. In other words, Hollywood's payroll savings plan is democracy at work to sell war bonds. Like that carpenter I was talking about, Brian, you hit the nail on the head. In a few weeks, we expect to tell the Treasury Department that every actor, stenographer, writer, musician, makeup man, costumer, hairdresser, executive, business manager, agent, cameraman, sound technician, director, carpenter, clerk, electrician, and set dresser has signed up that every man and woman who works in motion pictures and the allied branches of the industry is in the payroll savings plan and is voluntarily putting at least 10% of his or her salary in United States war bonds. Not just this week or this month, but every payday for the duration of the war. And it's one production with the starring part for everyone. Well, who's starring here in the Lux Radio Theater next week, C.B.? First, let me tell you the play, Brian. It's Frederick Lonsdale's famous comedy, The Last of Mrs. Cheney. And our stars will be Norma Shearer, Walter Pidgeon, and Adolf Manjo. The Last of Mr. Ch Mrs. Cheney ran a whole season on Broadway and twice made a hit in motion pictures. I fully expect it to keep up that brilliant record here next Monday night with a cast like Norma Shearer, Walter Pidgeon, and Adolf Manjo. Well, that play is one of my favorites, C.B. <laughs> Thank you, and good night. Good night, Mr. DeMille. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Remember, a bond every payday keeps the axis away. <laughs> Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Norma Shearer... Walter Pigeon and Adolf Manjou in The Last of Mrs. Cheney. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Ladies and gentlemen, modern medical science can cure cancer if the disease is discovered early. The Women's Field Army of the American Society for the Control of Cancer deserves your support in its campaign to spread knowledge of cancer control. Joan Fontaine appeared tonight through the courtesy of David O. Selznick and will soon be seen in the title role of the David O. Selznick production, Jane Eyre. Brian Ahern, star of Columbia Pictures, will be seen in their production of Salute to Sahara. Nigel Bruce appeared through the courtesy of Universal Pictures. His next picture is Universal's Sherlock Holmes Saves London. Heard in tonight's play were Jill Esmond as Isabel, Vernon Steele as General McLaidlaw, Gloria Gordon as Mrs. McLaidlaw, John Abbott as Melbeck, and Eric Snowden, Claire Verdera, and Pax Walter. The Lux Radio Theater is shortwave to American armed forces throughout the world.
Tune in next Monday night to hear Norma Shearer, Walter Pigeon, and Adolf Manjou in The Last of Mrs. Cheney. Our music was conducted by Louis Silvers, and your announcer has been Melville Ruick. <laughs>